Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video that was prompted by a question from a patron of mine, a gentleman called David. So David, this one is for you. But actually, it's a question that I think lots of other people have considered when they're building out a fixed wing model, particularly with iNav. And that is how do you set all the linkages up? Now, obviously, we have the servo at one end. We have a long linkage typically that goes out to a control horn on the control surface. And that control surface is either going to be a rudder, elevator or an aileron or in the case of something like this Vortigon 2 that I've been building. It's called an elevon because it actually does the elevator and aileron things together. Now, if you are a pilot that's been flying fixed wing for ages and been flying fixed wing before the flight controllers and iNav was a thing, none of this is going to be news to you. But this is really aimed at those of you who are either coming from that more traditional side of the hobby into fixed wings with flight controllers and iNav, or those of you that may be coming into fixed wings from the multi-rotor side where you've never had to worry about control surface geometry before. Sounds quite freaky that doesn't it control surface geometry and control linkage geometry but actually it's not as tricky as it sounds what i'm going to do in these videos is kind of run through this uh, first of all we'll talk about how it works basically uh, and some of the best practice of how to set up control linkage if you have never ever set up a fixed wing with manual control I've got two videos, I'll link them below. First one is simple OpenTX plane setup that goes through the process of how you can just put it together and eyeball it. There's a second video as well that talks about complex, not really complex, it's just some extra tips and tricks about how you set up models that might have things like gear and uh, gear doors and flaps and all kinds of other things. If you're just interested in control surfaces without flight controllers, those are the two videos I go and recommend that you watch. All that said, let's get into the slides and let's talk about manual stuff first. So a couple of things to talk about just before I get onto that very first slide. First of all is that if you have a way that set up planes that the way you were taught and it worked beautifully for you, then brilliant, carry on doing that. If you are going to add a flight controller to a fixed wing model, I'd strongly recommend that if you are able to, you fly it without the flight controller, you do all the trimming and all that goodness, figure out where the throws need to be and do all that stuff before you put the flight controller in because then you just take all of that knowledge and know-how of where all the control surfaces need to be and just copy that into the iNav setup. It makes the setup an awful lot easier. It's the recommended way to do it in the iNav wiki and the way that I would recommend you do it too. Flight controllers, things like iNav, Ardu, Pilot, Vector, and all those other things will fly a poorly set up plane okay, but they'll fly a well set up plane brilliantly. So even if you don't have all the geometry right and equal throws and all that goodness, uh, the flight controller will combat that automatically. It'll be working quite hard to do it, but it'll do it. If all the control surface geometry and the control linkage geometry is good, then the control uh, of the flight controller gets a lot easier because the throws are equal, everything's working in a similar way. I personally would always recommend trying to adjust and make sure that the mechanical setup of how the servo is connected to the control surface is as good as it can be and then dial it in using iNav. Don't rely on iNav settings for maximum minimum throw and the middle channel position of the servo as well as the weights and things like that in the output screen of iNav. The way I use that is that is just used to dial it in a little bit. I like again with the Vorticon 2 build that I've just done, I was getting 10 millimeters of travel rather than the eight, eight and a half that I needed. So I just dropped down the weight in the iNav stuff to 90. That would easily allow me to increase it later on. But really, if it, I absolutely knew before I made in the model that it was going to need eight and a half millimeters of travel or eight millimeters, then it actually is a better thing to do to actually tweak the control surface. Now there are some basics for good mechanical setup. First of all is to test the servos when you have them on the bench. Uh, no matter who you buy them from, whether they're beautiful 20, 30 pound servos from someone like High Tech or the cheap and cheerful servos from someone like Hobby King or God forbid something from eBay that you've bought that is $5 for a bag of five. Never put them in a model if you're building a model without testing them first. Get yourself a servo checker. They have a servo exercise function. 
plug them in and just leave them running on that servo exercise function. If you really want to uh, give them a workout, uh, attach a little weight on an arm to that and that will make sure that the not only are you testing that the things like the potentiometer inside the servo is nice and clean and that is working great, but also that there aren't any broken or snapped teeth inside the gears too. Once you've finished exercising it, I would put the servo checker on to 1500, which is the middle channel position, and then attach the horn or try and attach the servo horn to as close to 90 degrees to the servo as you possibly can. We can tweak that in a little while, but that's not a bad place to start to install it into the wing. Connect the control rod onto the wing itself. There's usually an adjuster on one end or the other, so we don't have to worry about that too much at this point. And with everything just nipped up, use the servo checker to go from 1000 to 2000. Ideally, what you're looking for is the range of movement on the control surface might be, I don't know, eight millimeters down, eight millimeters up in the case of this Vorticon 2 that I'm building right now. So I would move the controls linkages around so that at 1000, I get the maximum negative deflection or the other way around 2000 and then the other direction I get the maximum deflection in the opposite direction so that might be 1000 that might be 2000 and that might be eight millimeters in either direction now the way you do that let's talk about that very simply because also this confuses people too so to get less movement what you need is you need the linkage closer to the pivot point on the servo and further up on the linkage that is connected to the control surface but if you want more movement, then you swap those around. You want it connected further away from the pivot point on the servo towards the end of the arm and closer to the pivot point on the control surface. So just work to get it as close as you can by moving those pieces around so that from 1000 to 2000 on your servo checker, you're getting the movement that you actually need. There's no point in doing things like INAV of having only 50% weight because you lose a lot of the granularity and the fineness of the movement by only using a small amount of the servo's movement as well. Now, sometimes that isn't possible because of where the servo is situated and how all the linkages are set up, but wherever you can, that's what to try and aim for. In my instance here, this is how I'd ended up setting it up on this Vortigon 2 wing from E-Wings, and it's giving me just under 10 millimeters in both direction, which is just slightly over what it says in the manual. Now, if I wanted to give myself eight millimeters, what I'd do is I'd just increase the connection point at the back on the post, and that would reduce the throw. Now in iNav setup, iNav setup is pretty easy. Uh, what you need to do is follow the process that I went through in the iNav for Beginners 2020 series. But there's a couple of other little tips and tricks. Now I've talked about 90 degrees as part of the manual setup, uh, but there's also a little bit of confusion that I've seen pilots get into. So I want to talk a little bit more about that. Obviously, when you power up the model and you start playing with iNav, you'll almost certainly find that one of the aileron servos will need reversing or the elevon servos will need reversing. That's quite typical. If you want to test the maximum throw on the bench of uh, the model in iNav, remember to test it in manual mode. You can also see in the output tab what the actual values that are being sent to the servos are. If you try and test the actual movement on the bench in something like angle or horizon, one of the stabilized modes, it'll only move uh, up to about 1750 and down to about 1250, something like that. You won't get full travel. So be careful of that. When you're looking for maximum movement, always make sure you are in manual mode would be my recommendation. Once you've got the travel that you need, uh, the midpoint in the servo output screen is where you need to set where the servo is going to be in the middle. Kind of obvious, right? However, there's one little wrinkle. And that little wrinkle is where that 90 degrees is related to the rest of the controls. So here we have that wing again, there's a control surface at the back, and the control horn on the servo is at 90 degrees to the servo, which is how most people talk about setting it up. However, that will give you a slightly uneven throw because a servo output shaft is actually moving in a circle part of that movement is going to be in the direction that you want and as it continues to move round the movement starts to transition to 90 degrees out of phase of what you want 
So ideally, you want the servo to be at 90 degrees to the linkage, not to the servo. And that will give you equal throws in opposite direction. And that's really important for things like the elevator and the aileron as a starting position. Once you've got that done, then just tighten everything up. Uh, there are a couple of extra little things that I would do. I would always line up the control surface inline the wing so that th there's no uh, kind of up or down bias. You can eyeball that, or if you want to, you can put a straight edge by the side of it. Um, but iNav with the servo trim can kind of take care of a lot of that for you anyway. But the only difference to that is if you're in a flying wing, again, like the Vorticon 2 I've got here, I would give yourself just a little bit of reflex. And what reflex is, is where the control surface is just a couple of millimeters up. So rather than being in a neutral position straight out the back of the wing, you just turn it up a little bit. Wings tend to fly better in that situation. Check the manual for the particular flying wing that you're setting up. Once that's done, fly the model uh, in something like angle mode or horizon mode to get it nice straight and level and I use servo auto trim uh, when I'm flying straight and level flying like that for a couple of seconds it will reset all the midpoints of all the servos where they actually need to be in flight once you've got that set then land and you'll be able to fly in manual mode I would review the changes however on the bench look at where those control surfaces need to be see whether or not the servos are dramatically away from that 90 degree position with the control linkage that you have. If it is, I potentially would then reset that, just undo, loosen the, con the control and just set that manually and put the servo back in the 90 degree position because ideally what you want is you want the same throws in either direction from that neutral midpoint. So hopefully that's made a little bit of sense. If you weren't sure about how you did it, that's how I do it and it seems to work pretty well. It's all based on my experience of flying fixed wings for many, many years without putting a flight controller anywhere near them. A uh, couple of things though that you may hear about. Now, having the servo not at 90 degrees so you do have a slightly uneven movement can be actually useful and you occasionally will see that on planes and it's done very uh, specifically. That's to combat things like adverse yaw. The way it works is when an aileron in particular goes up and when the aileron goes down to, to turn the model, then the way it tends to work is that you'll find that one wing has more drag than the other one and it starts to create what's called adverse yaw. So it acts almost like a rudder. Now what you can do is you can set the linkage up so that one of the controls move in a slightly less than the other one. So you still get the roll command but with less of that adverse yaw. I'm not going to cover that in here, I'll just make you aware of it. So if you see a plane that's set up like that and the linkage isn't exactly at 90 degrees, there's potentially a very good reason for it. It could be that the builder's been lazy and just hasn't dialed in all the linkages, but it could also be that the builder is very accomplished and has done that for a very specific reason. Don't forget, if you want to dial in all of the settings, iNav is the place to go. You can also set the maximum and minimum values in the servo travel in iNav, and that can kind of accomplish the same thing. And also using the midpoints is a great way to set that 90 degree. If it's not quite there uh, at 1500, like on my particular build, I needed to change it from 1500 very slightly to get it spot on. Uh, the other thing as well is that you can use the rates in this particular screen in iNav in the outputs to reduce the throw very slightly. Personally, I only like to use uh, anything less than 85, 90% of the throws is kind of an indication that you need to go back and sort it out mechanically. I have reduced it by 90% here. If it was any more, I'd kind of undo all the linkages and kind of uh, reset them so that I had exactly the right throws. Changing that weight on this screen here will change the amount of deflection. Uh, again, use that as a fine tune setting rather than something to get you out of a badly set up mechanical linkage thing in your wing. So hopefully that's been useful for those of you that are coming into this. I've had quite a few questions about this over the last couple of weeks and I've had a couple of people get into trouble. So hopefully now uh, that explains it. And again, this is remember this is kind of aimed at beginners. There's loads of really complicated stuff about how you can use uh, uneven geometries and stuff to get it right. But that's how I set it up in iNav and it works particularly well.